Hi, so today what I'm going to talk to you about is using my finale template for uh, doing uh, Roman numeral analysis. And uh, you know, uh, a lot of times we have students and they're in handwriting analysis and then they got to hand that in, but this is allows for allowing for digital um, transmission of assignments and allow students to hear what they're playing and then put Roman numeral analysis in a document, transmit that to a teacher and the teacher can open it up and we don't need any paper. It's all entirely digital. So I created a bunch of different templates. Uh, this one is uh, coming from the template of Melody with P Piano. Uh, there's one that's just Piano, there's one that's just Lead Sheet. Um, but you can uh, use any of my templates and then you can change uh, any of the uh, instruments that you want, you can do whatever you want. Uh, what I've done is I've used the expression tool, which is this one with the MF, to create um, expressions that are all Roman numerals using the Berkeley Roman numeral system. <clears throat> and I've created a host of shortcuts, uh, uh, the bulk of which are right here, listing here on the template. Uh, so to make it really easy to do this um, and to have these expressions in there. So I have a piece of music here, a little four part, uh, uh, harmony and then a melody. We can listen to it here. Um, let's give a listen and see. So you can see there's all sorts of harmony three stuff going on here. We have diatonic chords, we have secondary dominant chords, we have dual function related to chords, we have uh, non-dual function related to chords, uh, we have substitute dominance, uh, so and a modal interchange chord. So the whole ball of wax, right? Um, and so we want an easy way to be able to do Roman numeral analysis <clears throat> and keep it in finale. Um, so. Uh, what I did again is create these expressions and if you click on the expression tool you could double click over any of these measures um, and you'll see that there's a Roman numeral here classification and I've created what I think are the bulk of all the Roman numerals that we use you know first in the major keys and the minor keys um, every kind of Roman numeral that we could possibly have of seventh chords and some sixth chords and diminished chords um, and then in addition to that uh, a standard all in in order in numerical order and then from one through seven and then um, then I have secondary dominance and also secondary dominance when it's deceptive resolution and substitute dominance and when they have deceptive resolution and some classifications of tonic subdominant etc chord function arrows brackets dotted arrows dotted brackets uh, chromatic modulation just as many things as I possibly could think of that are used within the uh, standard kind of harmonic many core classes at Berkeley. Um, so uh, we have a one major seven chord is our first chord and I could just click on this and click there and oh there we go there's one major seven. Um, but in addition to that <clears throat> instead of going into that box I created a shortcut and if you look in this box again you can see there's a little one in the right hand in corner there and that's because what I did is I selected a measure and then I held down shift and I held down the one and now that makes a meta key. That means every time that I want to uh, do a shortcut, instead of going into this window, what I can do is I select this tool, I go where I want to put it, I hold down the one key on my keyboard, and then I just click, and then there's one major seven. And I see, oh, the next one is a seven minor seven flat five, so I'll hold down a seven there. And then here's a six chord. Oh, what do you think? I'll hold down a six. There we go. Still doing great. And we even have a four chord down here. So there's all my diatonic chords. Next, I see <clears throat> I have some dominant seven chords. Here's five seven of four. So if you look up here, you can see that W through Y is secondary dominance. Y, W through Y. Well, those are the letters W, E, R, T, and Y that are beneath the number 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6. So secondary dominance. So 5, 7 of 2 is W. 5, 7 of 3 is going to be E. 5, 7 of 4 is going to be R. These are the letters under the number 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6. So here we have five, seven of four. So I'll go to the four and I slide my finger down to the R and I type that. And there we have five, seven of four. And I see that it does go to the four chord. So I'm gonna put an arrow and I'm gonna use A for arrow. A for arrow, because that was the easiest thing I could think of. And then I can double click that. And I'm like, hey, you know, that's looking sort of big. So I double click on that and I can resize it to make it look a little better. Now the thing of it is, 
Finale being finale, had I not chosen the shortcut method, it turns out that if I go into here and I click on this arrow down at the bottom, and then I resize this arrow, the trouble is every arrow that I resize is now going to be this size. Because why? Because it's finale. So um, I delete that and I have the shortcut. And now when I resize this arrow, not every arrow will automatically be that size. So we have 574 and oh look, it's uh, preceded by its related to. So we put a bracket, B for bracket. Here's the shortcuts right here all listed. Uh, so I'll hold down a B. And again, I can resize this. I can move it around so that it looks really good. As a teacher, I don't really care too much, you know, if it's exactly looking perfect. I just want to see, do the student understand this? So, you know, if you get anywhere in the ballpark, then I'm, I'm cool with this. Um, and then, oh, look, we have a sub five here. This is sub five of six. And I'm trying to think about what letters that I could use for sub five of six. Now, it's not written in the shortcut, but what I decided, you know, is that if I go to my sub fives, um, I actually put in some shortcuts on this one, and I said I'm going to use the third layer of uh, level of letters, and I'm going to go from um, from L all the way to to uh, let's see, what did I do? Sub five, I went from from L all the way to F. So L is sub five of six, and the letter next to that is K, that's sub five of five, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So I made some more shortcuts. So now I'm going to put that one there, and I'm going to have sub five of six. Now the great thing about this and using the uh, chord tool is that if I change the layout of my piece and suppose I want to put this measure up here. So I select the measure and I use my up arrow on the bottom right hand of my uh, laptop and it pushes it up there and all everything shifts with the chords. Shifts with the chords. So it's not like text that would just sit in space. Uh, it, so I can change my layout and all these Roman numerals are going to stay uh, aligned with the measure, so with the beat where they're assigned. So that's pretty good. And then here I have a dotted, dotted bracket so I can put that in there and uh, dotted arrow is C by the way so we'll put that C because it's going down a half step and preceded by a related to minor seven flat five a little rare but that's okay and we'll put a D here for a dotted bracket and slide that down so it looks all nice and dandy oh we're doing just grand and then oh look I have a modal interchange chord this is a four minor seven chord so I'm gonna go to the four section see all my fours I got four four major seven four dominant seven four minor oh there's four minor seven I'm going to put that there and I'm going to hold down the letter M because you know what? It's a modal interchange chord and it's always good to know about those things because that's going to affect our ch choice of chord scale. So I put that there. So now we have Roman numerals for everything that's going on here. I have diatonic chords, secondary dominant chords, sub five chords, modal interchange chords. I have uh, arrows and brackets and dotted arrows and dotted brackets and modal interchange indicated. I could even do stuff like, hey, if you want your, uh, to show what is the function of a chord, then I could put, you know, We'll click here and we'll say, hey, I'm going to show that that's a tonic chord. And so I slide down here and uh, find tonic. Great, there's tonic so that we are showing chord function. Again, we can slide stuff wherever we want it. Um, all these kind of things are really um, just so that students can supply a document to us and everything is embodied inside the document. So we can play that back and students can also check their work when they're listening. An important thing when you play back, uh, when you select the chord tool, go under there and make sure this is not enabled. This is turned off so that that way all we hear are the notes that have been written, not the finale trying to play chords. It often makes mistakes. It doesn't know anything about voice leading, so we don't want that. So that's a really good thing. A lot of times students are like, well, how can I make it play faster? I, I typed in tempo, but it didn't do anything. Yeah, I know this is broken. This hasn't worked for at least five versions of Finale. Uh, it doesn't work at all. So the thing to do is uh, we're going to select all, Command A, <clears throat> of uh, the whole piece. And then we're going to select the MIDI tool. It looks like a MIDI plug, like the five pin DIN plug there. And go to the MIDI tool and select Tempo. And then Set to. And so we can set the tempo to the whole piece. Let's set it at 160 because it's just going too slow. OK, we're set. Let's see how it does. Now we'll play it back. One, two, three, four. Yeah, there we go. 
So now the tempo is happening and you can even set in uh, retards, all sorts of different things with that. That works out pretty nicely. Um, you could add an instrument if you're like, yeah, but I want a bass part to this. Uh, how do I do that? Um, so all we do is we're going to go over here to the main window, the score manager, and we say, hey, I'm underneath the piano, I would like to add another instrument. <clears throat> and so what will I add? Let's add pluck strings. Let's add an acoustic bass. Boom, there you go. There's your acoustic bass. It's automatically spaced properly and everything. <coughs> we'll change uh, how, um, that whether we can see the empty measures or not, you know, we can change the attribute to that, but, but we're all set. So the thing is, um, you can use my template as the starting place and then rename it for whatever it is that you want um, each time. And that's how I do it. I just start with my template instead of trying to load the library. Uh, the library thing is just such a mess with Finale not being in the right order. And uh, so I like it this way. I've got my template. It works. You can make your own templates make those work. Just start with mine so you have all this stuff already built and you don't have to spend the 100 hours that I spent, you know, figuring out how to do all this and put in all these different Roman numerals. So I think that's all I got. Um, I hope this is useful for you. You can reach me at dbharris at berkeley.edu if you have any questions about, you know, how to do this, uh, or if you don't have a copy of the template. I, you know, I'm I freely give this to anybody if it's useful. We use the Berkeley system of Roman numerals. This is not for classical harmony. This is for popular music. So we have all capital Roman numerals, and we have the way that we notate everything. Um, we have passing diminished. We don't have secondary seven chords. We have our own way of describing popular music and it's pretty darn effective um, and this is uh, coming for I use this in MAT Harmony 2, 3, 4 and Reharm I have all my students submit these I give them templates with you know everything all set up for them with the instruments they want sometimes it's just simple here's a diatonic tune put Roman numerals on it 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 and 7 show me the diatonic chords it's super easy and they can transmit this via email because this is takes almost no storage whatsoever as opposed to if they take a picture of something now we have a jpeg that's got you know a few megabytes eh, that's not easy this is easy and students are can hear the last thing i'm going to show you is okay i want to check my notes but i want to do it like you know not in tempo so if you hold down option and you hold down then the space bar then you see this speaker and you can scrub and i'm just moving the mouse so that this is a scrubbing feature so that we can hear individual parts of the score anywhere that we put the mouse and then I can just move this however I want just to hear it really great feature for hey that chord sounds wrong let me see what's going on let me see if I want to change something um, so it's a scrubbing feature alright that's all the shortcuts I got uh, I hope this was useful to you uh, take care